How's it going, everyone? I'm back with another video. And this video, I'm going to be actually talking about some uh, tricks and tips and whatnot to speed up your Chrome experience. And uh, this time around, this isn't something that just pertains to Chromebooks, but uh, anyone who's using a Chrome browser, one Windows or Mac or wherever. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is head over to the settings menu. And in the search bar, just type in, uh, just type in site and then setting. So you're going to want to open up the site settings. And there's a few things we want to tweak here. First, first of all, on the uh, cookie, cookie site settings here. Um, now this third, third party, uh, third party cookie blocking should already be enabled, but just in case you want to make sure this little blue slider is to the right, basically, to block those third-party cookies. And then um, a few other things here. These can all pretty much be left. I mean, if you want, you can disable your microphone, uh, possible security things, things like camera. Actually, I'm going to disable that. Um, so I'm going to block sites from using my camera for security reasons. Uh, notifications is a big one. Because what, what I tend to find is, and I talked about this in another video, is a lot of sites nowadays are really wanting to just kind of pound you with notifications. You get, uh, you know, pop-ups on so many different sites now saying, hey, can we send you notifications? And for me, at least 95% of them, I don't want notifications from. Uh, it can be re-enabled, by the way, for certain websites. For instance, you can go down here. You can just add a website, but there's also an easier way to do that. There's also an easier way to enable um, some of these settings that we're going to disable. There's, uh, a, there's an easy way to um, enable it for certain websites. For instance, notifications, if you want notifications from YouTube, my channel, for instance, or from Facebook, you can, you can uh, manually enable that, but I'm going to cover that in a minute. So... Flash, me personally, I, I keep that enabled because some sites still use it for whatever reasons. So default in Chrome is it's disabled. It blocks websites from using Flash, which does cause some websites to not work. Um, Pop-ups are blocked by default, but just in case, make sure, you know, in case your browser is set up a little bit differently, ads should also be blocked by default, so we're good there. Sound, uh, this is an interesting one, but I actually disable this. And the reason is, is so many websites now, um, on top of wanting to send you notifications, are now playing these video ads with sound. And sometimes the sound is really loud. And either way, whether it's loud or not, it's actually quite annoying. Uh, you know, I'm sitting there trying to listen to music or, or whatever. And all of a sudden, I go to this website and it just starts playing a bunch of sound. Uh, you know, sometimes multiple <laughs> different video ads are playing at the same time. It's it's uh, can be a bit annoying. So anyway... I disable that by default. I'm going to show you in a minute how to enable that. If you do want it enabled for certain sites, again, YouTube is probably one you want to have that enabled. Um, so this all looks good here in the site settings. Let me show you how you can enable what you want to enable. So you go to a website here. Let's say YouTube. Oh, hold on a sec. There we go. You go up here and on the top on the little padlock symbol, and you tap that. And that's going to show you the settings for this specific website, in this case, again, YouTube. And um, you can then go along and enable whichever of these you may want to enable. Uh, sound, for instance, is probably something on YouTube you want to have. Uh, possibly notifications. Um, camera, if you're live streaming from your, from your computer, I suppose. So that is that. Then once you change any settings, then you will need to reload the page and that that's true across all websites with the whole padlock thing by the way um, this there's not just youtube of course it's any website you want to enable sound or enable notifications i do recommend that you leave those things disabled by default because um if i had to guess probably for most of you all out there including myself uh, things like notifications and sound is something i don't need most websites to be able to i don't need most websites to be able to play sound i don't need most websites to be able to send me notifications i don't want them in fact to send me notifications so the next thing we're going to do yeah. is we're going to go over dig a little deeper here to the chrome flags area so that's up here you just type that into the browser unibar i believe is what google refers to it as and 
Uh, seems like this list gets longer every time I look at it for flags, but there's a few key things in here. Now you remember in the site settings over here, uh, we had disabled the uh, third-party cookies. Well, some websites will not work uh, unless you have third-party cookies enabled, including uh, Screencastify, which I'm using to create this video. So um, let's just type in cookie. Um, so what I uh, highly recommend, and I'm not going to tweak these right at, I'm not going to, I unfortunately can't show you in this video because as soon as I uh, enable and then try to, you know, restart my browser, it's going to uh, actually stop the video. So, uh, but this, what this does is this uh, enable third and enable improved UI for third party cookie blocking. Um, what this does is this gives you a, um, a little thing right up here, right up here by the, uh, right by the star that would enable you to, an, uh, well, what it does is allows you to enable third-party cookies for whichever website you're on. And if, if it's not working, for instance, uh, like I said, Screencastify is one of those. So once that's enabled, another thing in here that's really handy is this one here. Let's see if I can highlight it or something. No, I can't. Okay. Well, this right here, reader mode. Um, if you do a lot of reading inside a browser, you know, maybe reading blogs, you can also uh, enable this. What this will give you is, uh, for those of you who are also Android users, you may notice um, they added this into the Chrome browser on Android. Um, and it is here in the flags as well on the Chrome desktop browser. And what this does is, again, right up here in the unibar, right up near the star on, uh, on web pages, it'll give you a reading option, which will basically get rid of um, images, get rid of video, and just give you the text in like a single column. It isn't perfect because the column is like really narrow, but it's usable and it is useful on some, uh, some pages, especially ones that show a lot of ads, by the way, because by blocking images and things, it's also blocking ads. So kind of useful. Some of the different options in here. I actually really want to play around with this one. I'm not going to right at the moment, but enable SMS receiver API to work across devices. That sounds pretty cool. If you're using Android messages, I, I assume that's what that is for. The uh, touch UI layout is kind of handy. Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's useful. Sometimes I think it's not. But um, the basic idea is these X's up here for closing web tabs. It makes them a lot larger. It makes some other icons and buttons inside the browser a lot bigger. Um, as you might imagine, you know, it's kind of in the name, Touch UI. It's useful on tablets or in my case with a Pixelbook, um, I have a touchscreen laptop and it can be useful at times for that. It says right here, it'll instantly tether to your Google phone um, if they're nearby. Though that may already be in the settings, actually, on Chrome OS at least. Huh, kind of curious if it is. This one's actually quite useful, uh, especially if you're making videos like I am, which means I should probably have it enabled right now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this is, uh, again, this is uh, similar to a feature in Android. Um, except in Android, it is, instead of in the flags, it is in the developer menu. Um, and what it does is it just simply, when you tap a spot on the screen, it highlights where you tapped. And it's very useful for making videos, 